Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft All the Mods 8. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Refined Storage mod, specifically how to use the network transmitter and receiver to be able to set up multiple different grids to access from different areas while still combined to the same storage. Now, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button, so that way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. Alright, so, uh, a couple things we're going to make today. Uh, first, we're going to make a grid, okay? This is from Refined Storage, and that's going to be one machine casing, three pieces of glass, two improved processors, a construction core, and a destruction core. Now, that'll make a basic grid, but you can do this with any of the different grids in refined storage. So you could do it with a regular grid, crafting grid, crafter grid, fluid grid, so on and so forth. But for this today, we're just going to use a basic grid. Next, we're going to make the network transmitter. That's going to be a machine casing, three ender pearls, two advanced processors, a construction core, and a destruction core. And then last, a netherite ingot. So obviously, you'll be a little bit further in before you can do this once you have access to netherite. Next is a network receiver, which is basically the same thing, but upside down. We're going to have a machine casing, three ender pearls, destruction core, and our construction core, two advanced processors, and a nether, uh, netherite ingot. So as you can see, they're very, very similar, just depending upon which side you have the pearls on. And then we're going to need a network card which is going to be six pieces of quartz-enriched iron, two pieces of paper, and one advanced processor. Now, of course, before all of that, you're going to need your first refined storage set up. Now, I've already done a tutorial showing how to get that started. I will link that down in the description. If you've not built a refined storage yet, pause this one. Go check that one out real quick first. It'll catch you up to where we are, and then we'll step into where we're at. All right? Well, welcome back. Okay, so we have a basic refined storage set up right now. For this one, I'm using a crafting grid. We have our controller, and we have a disk drive with a couple of storage disks in it. And we've just got a few things in there to show that it works. And then, of course, our controller is powered by um, an RF power source. Any RF power source will work. Uh, I'm using just a creative energy battery, but any reactor or generator or uh, solar, wind, anything will work, as long as it produces RF power. Okay, so let's grab our components. So basically what this is what we're doing here today is we're going to go ahead and say, hey, you know what? In my home base, maybe I've got something a distance away. Maybe I don't want to run back to my refined storage every time I want to craft. I've got another work area a distance away from this. And so I'd like to be able to access my storage no matter where I, I go to. So let's just say way off in the distance, I have another area where I'm working on my bees. Maybe I want to have bees put together. This is going to allow you to have another setup, but still connected to the same disk drives, giving you access to all the same items stored within them. So the first thing we're going to use is the network transmitter. Now the network transmitter has to be connected or touching one of your other original refined storage pieces. You can set it right here. You'll notice it lit up blue because now it has power because again, RF energy will run through components of refined storage. So you can have a whole bunch of refined storage components. You only have to give your controller power, and as long as they're all connected to each other, they'll all have power. You can set it on this side, you can set it on this side. If you want, you can stick it on the back. It doesn't matter, as long as your transmitter is connected to your original system. All right? So I'm going to put it there right now. Now let's just say we're going to set up another storage system over here. We're going to do it in our bees area. We want to have access to our storage system when we're here messing with bees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down our network receiver, okay? We use the transmitter over at our original, put our receiver here. I'm going to take the grid and connect that to the receiver. I usually put them on top, you can put on the side, that works just as well. And then the last thing we have is our network card. Now what you're going to do is you're going to look at your receiver, you're going to shift, right click, okay? That's going to sync this network card with this receiver. Now when I scroll over it, it says it's linked to and it gives the uh, coordinates to where that block is. OK, 
Okay? So now all I have to do is go back over to my transmitter and set that network card inside of it. You see it says missing network card? I set that inside. And if we go back over here, you're going to see that now my receiver and my grid are all lit up. Because again, power is transferring from my original controller. So by using the network card, it's the same as having it physically connected. I do not need a separate power source for this setup. But now I can click on my crafting grid and you'll see the same items. This is a regular grid, not a crafting grid. I'm sorry. You'll click on your grid and you're going to see the same items we saw in our original storage system. Right? So we look in here. So now over there, I have access to everything that's inside of my refined storage. Mm -hmm. And I can add things to it here as well. Let's just say we'll grab a stack of warped planks, right? I'm just going to go ahead and put that in here. Boop. And I, that I, those items that I just put in there, oops, hit a button, is going to transfer into the disk drive I'm already using, and I now have access to it at all locations connected. And I've yet to find a limit on how many of these you have. You can just keep connecting transmitters to this system. You can have a whole block of them if you want to. And you can have different receivers all over the place with different grids or crafting grids. Now, this is really handy if you have some type of a production process that's making things that you want to go into your system. So let's just say over here I have um, bees and stuff and I wanted components from my beehives to go directly into my system. Well, I don't want to run wires or cables all the way over there and have them all over the place. So now I could set one of these systems up right next to this and have it run in remotely here. So it's a great way to be able to get items into your system from a distance without having to connect it all with cables. You can connect it with cables, don't get me wrong. Cables for refined storage will work just fine. There's no limit to the distance and they'll get on over there. Uh, but why go through all that trouble when you can do what we just did, which was very, very quick. So again transmitter connected to your original system receiver at a different location with a grid of any kind and I'll have to grab another network card because I used mine Boop. and then shift right click on your receiver put that network card inside of your transmitter now they have power and once again I have access to all of my components so super easy to do overwhelmingly useful for many of the different things you're going to do. Uh, yes, there are wireless components. You can get your, uh, um, your different uh, wireless grids you can carry around with you. But this is the best way to have automated processes that are a distance away feed directly into your refined storage. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that way you don't have to run a bunch of wires. All right? So pretty easy one today, but one I think you're going to find incredibly useful and probably get a lot of use out of. Um, but if you do have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please be sure to put that down in the comments section and I will do my very best to get back with you as quickly as I can, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see in all the mods 8. I'm always looking for new ideas. You can also go to my website, onlydraven.com. There at the bottom of the homepage is a place that you can submit questions, feedbacks, or recommendations via email if you'd like to reach out to me directly. Uh, while you're there, you'll also find links to all of my social media accounts and a bunch of other resources, streaming schedule and such. Highly recommend checking out the website. It's a really great resource. Well, that is going to do me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.